Friends, uh, we're so honored to welcome with us such a distinguished leader and personality from the state of Israel, Isaac Herzog, who now serves as the chair of the executive of the Jewish agency. I really refer Isaac as the, uh, the prime minister of the Jewish people. Uh, Bibi Netanyahu is the prime minister of the state of Israel. Isaac Herzog is the prime minister of the Jewish people. And he's had a most illustrious career serving in the Knesset from 2013 to 2018. He held several ministerial posts during his tenure in the Knesset. He was also the chairman of the Labour Party. And then on a personal note, our relationship goes back to 1975, uh, when both Isaac and I were students at Ramaz. In fact, the first Shabbat that his dear parents and family occupied their apartment in New York, um, his parents invited the Schneier family to join them for their first Shabbat dinner in New York. Um, and if you uh, recall the uh, mastery uh, and the elegance of um, uh, Isaac's uh, beloved mother, uh, who should continue uh, to live on for many, many more years. Uh, she was the uh, quintessential uh, queen of elegance, dignity, and grace. And Isaac, I can still taste uh, your mother's cooking uh, almost uh, 45 years later. Uh, so it's such a pleasure uh, to welcome my dear friend. We're so honored to have you participate in our Hampton Synagogue virtual series where every week we present a different luminary uh, from the state of Israel, uh, the Jewish people and the greater world at large. Uh, so welcome, it's a pleasure to have you with us. It's wonderful to be with you, uh, my dear Rabbi Mark Schneier. You are uh, not only a, a friend of mine since the days of old, I vividly recall being in, in the Hampton Synagogue less than a year ago in the summer of 2019. Little did we imagine what will engulf humanity and the world at large and our communities in these trying times, but I think your community is outstanding. I want to congratulate the Hampton Synagogue for opening up, the first synagogue in North America to open up uh, and going back on track and to wish well to all of our viewers in good health and happiness. Thank you so much, Isaac. So my first question to you is, as the Prime Minister of the Jewish people, as the head of the Jewish agency, you have taken the temperature of Jewish communities around the world in the midst of this COVID-19 pandemic. What is your evaluation and what is your prognosis of and for the Jewish people? Look, the uh, coronavirus uh, has hit, has struck hard on Jewish life around the world. The reason being that, uh, you know, Jewish life is dependent on gathering, on mifgash, on minyan, on the fact that we meet all the time. And this is part of the vibrancy of community, of kehila. And uh, I don't have to tell you that from kindergarten all the way up to uh, JCC's uh, synagogues, of course, social services, it's all in Gulf together. And uh, this pandemic has separated all of us and locked us down in our homes and communities have a huge problem in functioning. Now, North American communities in relative terms can count their blessing because they are in better shape than many other communities. You have a huge com Jewish community in North America and it's, well managed by federations and federations with JFNA, Jewish Federations of North America and good rabbis like yourself and may, mostly good leaders who are, who are lay leaders of communities. But communities all over the world are badly stricken by this crisis, some in danger of collapse, some in danger of, a, of, of not even being able to pick up. Let's start as an example with Italy. Okay, Italy, a historic Jewish community of 20,000 people, 22 communities, some of them names that immediately touch a chord in your heart, Venice, Genoa, Livorno, and this community from day one was strict so badly 
that I personally took over together with allies such as Karen I saw, and we helped that community with funding and with even crowdfunding in Israel. Uh, recently, a beautiful crowdfunding, the Israeli Jewish community uh, participating in supporting our brothers and sisters. But it goes down to even feeding members of the community or hotline to the community. And from that, we learned the needs of communities and we've established a special emergency loan fund with no income loans to communities. We've already distributed around $8 million. And we've done it and we've raised uh, this fund together with our allies at Karen I saw the Jewish Federations of North America, but a lot of resources of the Jewish agency. And we are helping dozens and dozens of communities all over the world. And I can go town by town and tell you how communities are in dire situation in many, many countries. And we should always make sure that we support each other. Thank you, Isaac. Thank you, Isaac. Uh, before you, you mentioned um, how this pandemic has engulfed the world. So I'm going to play on that word of gulf. And let's focus on Israel and the Arabian Gulf. Uh, throughout the pandemic, I have been in touch with many of the top leaders uh, from the Gulf region, from Saudi Arabia, UAE, Bahrain, Qatar, Oman, Kuwait. And as was reported in several stories about my activities in the Jerusalem Post and Times of Israel, four out of the six Gulf states have reached out to Israel in some form or capacity uh, during the COVID-19 pandemic. As the Middle East has become a paradigm for combating the pandemic and really is not being recognized for the uh, Herculean achievements and accomplishments both in Israel and in the Gulf in trying to uh, alleviate the effects of this pandemic, what do you think that Israel and the Gulf could do, not only in combating the pandemic, but using this time to strengthen relations between uh, the Jewish states and these Arab countries. So first of all, I commend you for your outstanding uh, <coughs> leadership in this. I uh, read the reports and I read the articles about your activity and I very much welcome what you're doing. You know, we at the Jewish Agency, we honored you at our Board of Governors just about a year ago, and you're going from strength to strength. This is strategic. This is strategic because I believe in interfaith dialogue. This is strategic because Muslims need to know about Jews in Israel, and Israelis and Jews need to know about the Arab world, all from all over the world, not only through the lens of the conflict, but rather through the lens of cooperation. <clears throat> Sorry. Now, I believe that this COVID-19 crisis has a few silver linings. One of them is the fact that in our region, there is underlying cooperation against this pandemic between Israel and its neighboring states, and definitely with Gulf states. And we have a lot to contribute and get from each other, share information and come with new ideas. I'll give you another example, actually from my own realm, which doesn't have to do with Arab countries, but teaches about how we can do things with other communities. So take the community in France. In France, France is about 400,000 Jews. It's 5% of the size of Israel in terms of population. In Israel, about 280,000 casualties, unfortunately. But in the French Jewish community, between 1,500 and 2,000 Jews passed away. This is an enormous number. So we volunteered a whole group of experts from Weizmann Institute and other experts, and we simply decided to help all the Jewish communities, dozens of them in France, and how to prepare for Shavuot and the next waves in social distancing and community life and, and coming forward with the medical infrastructure. And this is in France. So there are many other such examples. 
and I and this is a group from Weizmann, which can definitely also support, you know, Abu Dhabi, Dubai, or Bahrain, although they have a very good infrastructure of their own. Isaac, how do you see the pandemic impacting on Aliyah to Israel, uh, both the present and the future, the Jewish agency, um, you are the address for facilitating Aliyah. How do you see this pandemic? Impact? So remember, before the pandemic, during 2019, we had a record year of Aliyah of 35,000 Olim from 45 countries. We, the Jewish agency, are the ones commissioned to deal with Aliyah and register and bring the Olim over. We work with many agencies such as Nefesh Benefesh and many others, but we are the ones responsible uh, legally and author authoritatively to approve the Olim. During the COVID-19 cr uh, uh, crisis, uh, we had about 1,200 Olim, people who were pre-registered and probably approved before. They got into Israel fully quarantined, and thank God, no diseases and no uh, illnesses. But really, imagine somebody changing life, changing a language, changing a homeland, and has to go immediately to a quarantine. Now we project a huge wave of Aliyah, unequivocally. So this is a call of duty for all Jews around the world to um, uh, mobilize, to support uh, another wave of Aliyah to Israel. We see the enormous amount of calls we're getting in our 1-800 in the global center of the Jewish agency. We're in the amount of opening files, 40% uh, in English speaking countries, 40% rise in English speaking countries around the world, 70% in French speaking countries and so forth. So yes, we project a major wave of Aliyah for in the next uh, uh, two to three years. And my final question, uh, knowing you as well as I do, and really treasuring our relationship and our friendship, uh, the Herzog family, I said it publicly when you were at the Hampton Synagogue, uh, it's Jewish aristocracy, and you come from one of the most distinguished and renowned uh, lineages uh, of the Jewish people. Your uh, grandfather, blessed memory, was the chief rabbi of Israel. Your father served as the president of Israel. Uh, among other posts, he was Israel's permanent representative uh, to the UN from 1975, I believe, to 1977. Um, and I want to speak about your dad for a second, because today marks the 53rd anniversary of the beginning of the uh, Six-Day War. And your father also had a very illustrious military career. And during the Six-Day War, serving as Brigadier General, he was the spokesperson uh, for the IDF and for the Israeli military. And he is remembered profoundly for his eloquent broadcasts uh, that calm the nation, the people uh, during the war. Can you tell us something about that role that your father played during the Six Day War? That was an amazing role. I was then six years old and we were, and then we lived in Sala. That's the house I'm broadcasting to you from now my childhood home, and this neighborhood was all the army generals of those days, Moshe Dayan and Yitzhak Rubin and Ariel Sharon, think what great names and so many others. And they were the general HQ of the 67 war. And my father was mobilized to broadcast to the nation. There was only radio. He had 95% rating from three weeks before the war when people thought it's going to be Auschwitz repeated because of the threats of the Arab and of course the, the back turning of the international community. And uh, my father broadcasted to the nation and he derived some of his rhetoric from uh, Churchill's speeches and from speaking to people in the street. And uh, I, I vividly recall how he became a national hero because people until today tell me, look, I was, in a, I was in a shelter. My mother was pregnant with my sister, my brother, 
etc. Or people who are very, you know, coming of age telling me, father called me, called me in those very troubling times. Now, my father broadcasted both in English and in Hebrew. So the entire Jewish world knew what's going on. And he had one famous saying that he said to the people, Do, if I had to choose between being an Egyptian pilot attacking Tel Aviv or sitting in the shelter in Tel Aviv, unequivocally, I tell you, stay in a shelter in Tel Aviv. This was the message. We dug tre a trench here in the garden and we were bombarded by Jordanian cannons from Kalkilia, which is on the 67 borders. So this was really something unique. And at, towards the end of the war, my father was appointed as the com first commander of the West Bank in Jerusalem. I, on my, in my office in Jerusalem, in David Ben-Gurion's famous room where he led the Jewish agency before he became prime minister of Israel, I put a picture of my father and Ben-Gurion going to the Kotel, to the Wailing Wall, on the 9th of June, 1967, celebrating, and you can see Ben-Gurion looking at the wall with all his eyes, encompassing 2,000 years of exile, believe me. So yes, these were very, very historic days, and I truly remember them. And my father broadcast made him uh, so world-renowned that this was a platform later on that he became you an ambassador and later president of Israel. Well, you must be so proud, so proud. and so blessed uh, with these uh, memories. And I must tell you that here in the United States, with all the panic surrounding the COVID-19 pandemic and the demonstrations and rioting in the streets, if only we could resurrect your father, uh, his eloquence, uh, his gift of being able to comfort and console the people. Uh, this is the kind of spokesperson and leader we so sorely miss uh, at this time uh, here in America. And um, again, um, we're all inspired by the uh, memory that you just uh, shared with us. So I just want to... This is very nice of you, but it's also my turn to express, first of all, deep uh, uh, solidarity with uh, all Americans in these trying times, both uh, in the COVID-19 and later on, of course, in these, this week, which has been so, so painful uh, in America. So we care, and, and of course, we care for our brothers and sisters from the Jewish communities. I care personally as the chairman of the Jewish Agency, and I want to express a uh, a gratitude to you, uh, Rabbi Mark, for being such a great friend and for your warm words and convey my warmest regards to your dear parents Thank you. and your Thank wife. You. Thank you so much. And uh, as I want to uh, convey in return to the chairman of the Jewish agency, the prime minister for the Jewish people, uh, my beloved and cherished friend, uh, Isaac Herzog, I want to wish you and our viewers a Shabbat Shalom. And Shabbat Isaac, shalom. May, may God continue to watch over you and bless you. And may you always go from strength to strength. Shabbat, shalom. Shabbat Shalom. Thank you.